Welcome in Curious Crafters to the One Hour Saturday Spotlight. Apologies for the late start for those that have been here. There were a couple of little technical difficulties, but we're all good now. Woo! Today we will be highlighting Chatelaine Makes. Any questions seen within the chat at any point, start to finish, will be saved and asked at the end when Lorraine's one hour interview with myself is complete. Now, Lorraine, I see you down there with a big grin on your face. I'm hoping it lasts. <laughs> Please try and ignore the chat as best you can. Love my avatar for a little while and I'll begin the countdown clock as soon as you come up. When you're ready, give me a thumbs up. I have two thumbs up. Woohoo! Welcome in, Lorraine. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for, for asking and begging and pleading that I bring you up. I mean, had to fit you in somewhere, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you ready for your first question? Sure. Let's get going. Why? I'm going to bring you what I'm going to bring you up large for this one. I'm okay. going to make you large for this one. Lorraine, why should we watch and subscribe to you? Well, I've been watching uh, the craft and uh, the yarn dyeing uh, YouTube uh, programs or channels for a while. And I thought, I can do this as much as the next person. So what I try to do is help people learn what I've learned and uh, learn some of my experiences mm -hmm. and, and uh, help, help somebody who else who doesn't know even where to begin, help them start from the beginning. Um, I'm fairly new at this. Uh, I started in 2017, but had a two year break, two, three years, actually a three year break in this craft and uh i st i loved it from the first batch that i did before it was even done so um, i'd like to pass on that enjoyment to someone else and uh yeah help, help the next person who thinks that i could never do something like that i think everybody has it in them they just need that little bit of extra push and encouragement. And hopefully uh, my channel, with my channel, I can do that for at least one person out there. Push me, Lorraine. Push me. Push me. I, it's a very, very nice answer. Well done. I'll make you small again so you don't feel me. quite as intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> but good answer. Next question. For this particular craft, what are your, I can't live without it, craft room essentials? Well, I need pan. I need uh, my stove in my kitchen or, or a, uh, hot, a heat source of some kind. The yarn, of course, uh, water, and uh, a type of dye, whether it be natural dye or an acid dye. And do you tend to veer more toward the chemical dyes or the natural? Uh, right now, I've been uh, using more chemical dyes, but I do have, I do have. She's going to show something. It means I may need to make yeah. a big. These are food coloring dyes. I don't know if you can see them. Oh my gosh, there's all oh, sorts. They're they're gel. I get I get these. You can get these at Michaels or Walmart, and I had one that leaked in there, but they are edible. And um, this these ones you can use with natural fibers. Um, they do not work well with cotton, although you can get some. It's more of a tint, a pale tint. Mm -hmm. coloring and uh, that's actually what I started 
I started off that way with, um, I have another. This used to be about 10 inches. Oh, flipping neck. And this, this is nice. wool. It's a double strand of wool. Mm -hmm. And I started with this in a crock pot with water, vinegar to add the acid so that your coloring actually your, uh, adheres to the um, the wool fibers or your the fibers of your yarn if you're using uh, something other than wool and uh, food coloring. And he did it up and I loved it. And then, and then your hand dyeing took over again. Yes. Well, actually, that was my very first one. And then I've been seeing more uh, with acid dyes. So I uh, ordered some acid dye from Amazon because we can't get it here in stores, in our craft stores. So it has to be ordered online for us here in Canada. And uh, I started dabbling in that. Picked myself up a, uh, I also bought a, a, a small uh, ventilator mask, not a huge one like that was on one of your previous podcasts or previous uh, spotlights. But mm -hmm. I do have, I do have a smaller. Oh, I'm, I'm going to make you big again. Okay. I, okay. Do have, I do have a smaller version from Amazon. This was like, approximately around $20 and it does it does have a filter inside comes with extra filters and you don't want to leave it on too long but you do need it need it for when you're using the acid dye for for mixing purposes and how often do you need to change the filters in those I haven't used it enough to I like you, I only have it on like maybe five minutes at a time. So the filters will last a long time unless you are do, wearing it like for an hour or so. Yeah. Probably you would need to change it more often than that. Like more often, but five minutes, 10 at the, at the top, at, you know, tops that uh, I have that on. And it fits so snug that, and I have uh, claustrophobia to some extent. So I don't want to leave the mask on any longer than I have to. Uh -huh. So as long as your acid dye is, is in powdered form, you do need to have the mask on. So if I'm doing anything with powdered forms, that's when I put the mask on. Next question. Are there any crafters or designers that you particularly look up to when you're doing your hand dyeing, i.e., if you if you see somebody, let's say on a on a different platform, and you you see a dye, and you're like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder how they did that, and you might read up on it and try and do it yourself. Is there somebody that you look up to for that? Somebody that you follow? I I do follow uh, Chemnet Tutorials with Re Rebecca Brown on YouTube. But I get a lot of my um, color inspiration off of Instagram. I have several uh, people that I follow from there. And it's mostly just for um, to, to get inspiration from the colors that they have used. The, because they post pictures of their, of their colorways on, on uh, Instagram. Yeah. And the yarns look so beautiful. So it gives me um, ideas of what colors that I want to try to put together. And of course, mine never turn out the same way, but they're all originals. And whether it's a failure it, to some people There's or no not. Failure. No failures. No, no, there isn't. There isn't. Because if you want to make me big again, I will show you one. I'll make you big again. Well. <laughs> this one actually was a fail a failure, but it was supposed to be turqu uh, turquoise and pink speckles. 
and so it is it is honestly, it's like tie dye it yes there that's it's more true to color it is blue with um some pinks and purple don't forget the purple yes and of course my favorite color the purple <laughs> I, but, I quite like but, that. That ain't no failure, girl. That ain't no failure. No, that's that's why I said um, there are no failures. There are, uh, I think you know, turnouts that uh, turn out surprisingly uh, beautiful and better than what you had hoped for, and um, there are ones that are turn out. Specific, specifically by mistake but um i yeah i i never i never know how things are going to turn out until after i i wash and dry them always nice to be surprised mm -hmm. okay next question what do you do to make your workspace an inspiring place to be well as you can see, my my yarn room, my craft room is doesn't have like it, there's not much organization. It is organized to an extent. Um, every now and then, I do try to straighten it up. I do have behind me. I don't know if you can see over here. I do have a stash of um, from Nick Crate. Here's eyes and also online on um, Instagram I uh, have orders from a turkey and I try to get light um, yarns that I can um, do uh, dye the yarns mm -hmm. uh, you know and um, some I do for I do get uh, buy from the big box stores or the or Michaels because Michaels is our only uh, other craft store other than uh, the big box. And um, if I get a light enough uh, ball of yarn, then I can over dye it. Is there any particular? You, you say you you new to coming back to this. So have you yet found a particular? wool, cotton, yarn, whatever you want to call it, have you found a particular one yet that is your favorite to use because it works well for you? Uh, for as a base, um, mm -hmm. right now, not really, because I'm still, I uh, haven't had that many uh, bases other than the ones that came in my uh, yarn dyeing uh, kit from uh, Knit Picks mm -hmm. other than the big ball of uh, wool or the other balls of wool that I bought from Turkey. Um, I'd like to try uh, and order some slub uh, oh, bear yarn. Who, who what now? <laughs> it's called slub. It has little okay. nubbies. It has little nubbies on it. Ooh. And as far as I know, Knit Picks is the only one that has it. So, and with the, the um, currency conversion and shipping, it's kind of put on the I'd like to get list. It's the back burn a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Or should I say it's the back, it's on the back burner for your back burner. Exactly. Well, I use my back burner. Actually, I use my two front burners. Oh, see, now I'd know that if I watched your channel. And I have a, a big, you to take better note. <laughs> I have a big chafing pan that uh, I bought from Amazon. Uh -huh. and, and it fits across, Not it doesn't fill the top of my stove, but it fits across and I, it's better for me to put it across the, the front so it's easy access to me when I'm doing it, when I'm dyeing the yarn as opposed to front and back. Ooh, look at her upgrading. <laughs> Slowly, gradually upgrading. That's it, you gotta do it slow, girl. Okay, so along the same, along the same lines, mm -hmm. where do you look for inspiration? Mostly Instagram. 
any particular direction you search for? Do you search for particular people or a type of yarn or colouring or just let's see what happens? It's mostly uh, colours. And like my niece uh, posted a picture. It was a scenic picture. It, and actually it was a sunset. And it would have been like it's a perfect picture to draw um, colorways out of mm -hmm. and try to uh, replicate the colors in there. So it just uh, mostly for coloring and it doesn't necessarily have to be a yarn. It, it could be like not indoors, but a lot of outdoor sceneries, outdoor pictures. Mm -hmm. Right. Next question is, <laughs> see now I'm, thankfully, because I do actually watch your channel, despite the previous question, I do actually know the answer to this, but I'm going to let you let the people know. <coughs> when was the last time you cleaned or purged or organized your craft room? I straightened up. I tidied up a bit. That would have been last month. It, it was last month. It was. <laughs> actually, 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 I tidied up some after I made my um, scorched earth challenge video. And I've, I've got to say, I remember watching that video going, what the heck? <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, and there's more. Oh my gosh, there's more. Oh my god! Like through the entire lot. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember that video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. When do you feel the most creative? Uh, Mind-wise, when I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> my, mind, my mind just keeps going and thinking of, of different colors and uh, what what I want to dye. I have I have uh, wool and wool blends and I have some acrylic that I can over dye. Um, and I just try to think, well if I use if I use the acrylic, what colors could I could I use with that that it would turn out a, a nice colorway, colorway. Um, but a, a lot of times it is when I'm trying to go to sleep because I have trouble shutting off my mind. It certainly sounds like it. You need a, <laughs> you need a mallet, girl. Um, okay, next question. This is quite good because it, this is along the same lines as we've just spoken about. What do you do to keep yourself your space and your time organized well i devote most of my time to my craft uh, i do prioritize what actually needs to be done or that i have to do and i work it into my day around my crafts Craft is priority, no matter what. <laughs> well, Everyone else can wait. <laughs> uh, I'm retired now, so before work used to get in the way of my craft. So now my my craft is my priority. Um, and unless unless it's uh, family or medical, then it's pretty much second on the list. I love that. I love it. Okay. Next question. How do you combat creative blocks? Well, because I do other crafts, I switch. I switch up. If mm -hmm. I'm having a mental block or where to the point where it is this isn't working out for me. 
I will switch to a different craft. That's that's a good way of doing it. And then you come back with a fresh look. Exactly, exactly. We live in such a mass-produced society. Why should people continue to make things by hand rather than by mass-produced? For the uniqueness. When it's uh, mass-produced, it's repeating the same pattern all the time. Mm -hmm. One in one in five people are wearing the same colorway, or or one in five houses have the same home decor because they're using mass production. When you get something that is handmade, it is one of a kind. And it can't be mass. It can't be reproduced exactly the same. So, it, and like it shows part of the person's personality instead of working around a mass production uh, piece where everybody else or your neighbor has the same thing. I I completely agree. I, I love the uniqueness. I love it when I make a, a new project and Beanie comes along and puts a hole in it. And I'm like, well, that's okay. It's mine. It's unique. <laughs> even, even when you make a mistake, that mistake cannot be replicated. Yes. And it proves that you made it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Next question. What is your number one craft tip for hand dyeing or the best craft tip that you have been given? Wear gloves. <laughs> and, and even then you end up with some dye on your hands. So, it, it, it's inevitable. <laughs> wear gloves. I have a big box that I bought from, uh, I think I got it from Walmart. Mm -hmm. And, it lasts like a huge box. I'm talking a huge box, not a little box, but a huge box. So, and I get some of my stuff from uh, Dollarama, which is across the street from me. So, oh, that's handy. Right. They don't, uh, mind you, they don't have some stuff I'd like that they don't have. But if I can get it from there and try it out, I I do. If it if I get it and try it and it's a piece of crap as some people would say then i'll buy it for uh, somewhere else with better quality i i like your style that that would be me that would be me as long as i had the pennies in my pocket of course okay exactly. yep. next question um, you have to excuse me every now and again i'm having to blow beanie away because she stuck her back foot in me gob near enough <laughs> and she's cleaning and wanting kisses all at the same time it's this is a difficult position for an interviewer to be in <laughs> um ahem. right next question is this is the one that is every single week i'm guessing you've got it on your cheat sheet go for it what is your um ideal craft room if your craft room could get a makeover price not an option what would you have done to that craft room i would like it to be at least twice the size of it, that it is and have uh, cubbies or you know some kind of cubicle uh shelvings uh, along the walls right now i have mine um mostly in the along the wall and pretty much along every wall that I can have. And in my double closet, we removed the doors. So, but I would like who it, needs doors? It, well, they're under the bed. So yeah, who needs doors? Like really? The doors, they're bifold doors, so they take up more room. That's <laughs> less space that I have to put my craft stuff. Yeah, get rid of them. Get rid of them. Who needs? So, I would like to have it at least two, at least minimum twice the size that it is now, and a lot of shelving. 
any particular colours, window, ornamenty bits, desk, etc. Um, doesn't necessarily have have to have a desk because I do most of my crafts um, either in the kitchen or in the living room or um, sitting on my bed. So, but I do love to have the windows. I have a window in this room and, and I like that. And I will point out to those in the chat, I did ask her to close the curtains. They were open, but they were turning her into more of an angel than she actually is because she was just glowing. <laughs> so I did ask her to shut them. So apologies, people. That's not her normal way. Okay, next question. What occasion or holiday do you like to craft for the most? Uh, I would say Christmas. Yep, give me, give me, give me reasons, girl. But it's not. It, it's more of using what I have and mm -hmm. making things for for Christmas gifts. And and making decor, you know, um, decorations or home decor. Um, last year, I was on a gnome kick and snowmen so i made made a lot of those and used those for um decorating my house i want so, to see a snowman <laughs> oh christmas christmas and that's my favorite holiday christmas it's it's a lot of people's favorite plus I, plus i start as soon as christmas is over then i start thinking about Next question. And preparing for, for the next one. Go, go. Okay. <laughs> Just imagine <clears throat> snowflakes and snowmen all over the place and hand-dyed yarn that's got sparkles in it. Okay. Next question. What is the one crafting trend that you have not liked? I don't really um, do trends, so Good girl. I don't like because I don't do a trend. I don't think I could say there's one that I don't like. Good girl, good girl. That that would be me as well. Don't do trends. I do what I want to do when I want to do it. Ta -da! Well done. I would pat you on the head, but you know, social distancing and stuff. Well, it's better than boxing. <laughs> um, uh, what she meant by that people in the chat was because she was late and ruining my channel and her spotlight i wanted to box her ears really badly but again social distancing okay next question what is your favorite one crafting tool and yes you can include all your crafts in this my swift from i have a i have an amish a wooden amish table top swift so i'll i like the hanks and and mind you it is hard on my arms but I, I like winding and hanking up the yarn, so I would say I like would, that term. Hanking it would be up. my it would hanking up. Yes, it would it would be my swift. The swift, the swift. One day, the swift. Next question: Do you snack while you are crafting? Yes, but not cheesies. Not cheesies. What are cheesies? They're they're cheese puffs from oh okay from, from Cheetos, uh, because I I love those. But if I'm if I'm doing my craft, I can't eat them because they leave orange um, bits all over, and you get it on your work. So, but I do snack in between. But what do you snack on? Come on, girl. Reveal everything. Right now, it's carrot sticks. 
but um, I prefer to snack on like a licorice or uh, peppermint candy. Uh, sometimes uh, raw peppers. Oh, yes, please. Okay. But, but nothing that leaves crumbs, so no cookies. <laughs> no, no, bread or toast. no I, for that, I'd have to take a break. See, now, I, I would turn around and say, if anything was near me, there would be no crumbs because my gob would hoover them up. Right. There's no such thing as crumbs. That's <laughs> waste of food, that is. <laughs> but, but also, too, if I don't want to eat something, I will pick up knitting or crocheting because then I can't, I can't eat it because I'm doing this. So, but occasionally I do snack while I'm doing my crafts. Yes. Except for the, the yarn dyeing, which then I stack in between. It, it, why not? I, I, I like the sound of the carrot sticks. Like when you <laughs> crunch, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ooh, next question. I'll do but one more question. Good. And then we're oh, I want <laughs> um okay. What was your biggest hand dyeing expense? My swift. Do you dare reveal how much or is it do you know what it was expensive? We'll leave it at that. It, it was it was over fifty dollars Canadian. Okay. Okay. And that's that was for a, you said an Amish wooden swift. Yes. It's a stand it's a stanwood. So it's it's one of the higher uh better quality um swifts and I and I wanted a wooden one because uh the metal ones I've seen or with plastics uh tend to bend. Yeah. So so I I splurged. I splurged on my Swift, but that was that's my most expensive. I like it. I like it. Okay. We are now halfway through. So Lorraine, if you'd like to take a drink. Or two. <laughs> or or five if you like. It's coffee. Coffee. She's got coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> I have stopped the timer um, okay. just to address our live audience. Thank you so much for joining us, people that are in here right now. Any of your questions and compliments are being saved. So please bring out the questions. Bring out the compliment. If you see something that you really like or if Lorraine has said something in particular that you're like, oh, I love that idea. Oh, I admire that. Get it in the chat. It will be given to Lorraine. Nothing is left out. Um, but that will be after the, the hour with me, which we've got another 29 minutes left. So keep them coming in. And if you yourself are a crafter or would like to nominate someone, please send me an email. The address is in the description right down the bottom. Um, because if I don't get any people come into my email before Thursday. Miss Lorraine is our very last spotlight crafter. I don't want that. I want to bring you guys up. So email me. Anyway, my desperation please now ended. Lorraine, shall we restart the timer and sure. finish the second half? <laughs> okay, let's go for it. Let's <laughs> go for it. Okay. So the next question is, do you ever involve children in your crafts? Not this particular one, but I have, uh, my niece has a little girl that they live uh, about three hours from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, any of my amigurumi that I make, she, she tests it. If if she like if she likes it, then then it's a go. And not necessarily um amigurumi. I made some uh kitty purses or handbags and I gave her a pink one. She likes pink 
Mm -hmm. And poor girl, you couldn't take it away from her. <laughs> you got dirty looks if you even tried to grab it from her or take it. So if it's Haley approved, then it's oh, good. good. Item. So that's the only extent. Uh, but my yarn dyeing, no, because I work on the stove. Mm -hmm. So, and we live in a um, age restricted building. So, my grandchildren uh, are older. Uh, they're in their tw uh, one's in their in their twenties, and the other are in their late teens. Uh, so, and they don't live near here. So, um, yeah, the answer for the kids is no, not at this time. Right, I'm going to pause the timer just for a moment, and you're going to hate me for this, but I'm so so sorry. Do you want to open one of your curtains again? Because you've gotten sure. so dark. I noticed that. Must have You're overcast. disappearing on us, Lorraine. I have overcast, or I can try the light. I did. I mean, let's face it. I need to see that blue top you're wearing, Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? That that's much better. Thank yeah, you. I just now you can see when you smile. I just turn the light on. That that's that's fine. Either way, curtains or light. At least now we can see you again. Yes, and I actually have a top on and not my pajamas. All right, rub it in, girl. Rub it in. <laughs> no, that, that actually is is a running joke with my brother from another different parents, but um, it is a running joke that since I retired, I pretty much wear pajamas around the house. So, and what's it. wrong with living in pajamas? Nothing. Right there Nothing. we go. Right. Okay. Let's start the timer again, and we'll carry on. <laughs> Next question. What is the best craft project you have ever made? Ever. Ever? Ever. Um, I have a shawl that I made with my hand-dyed blue yarn. I, I, is that a hint? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. I can't turn it around, but... Give me a second so I yep. can share share the screen with you people. I don't know why it's not. Oh, there we go. I'm lagging a little bit. Um, you guys, I apologize. I can't turn it around. But let's get that up. Um, bear with me, bear with me. It's coming. Uh, okay, there we go. That that was made with my uh, my first batch of hand dyed wool. So we've got teals and blue and purple and pink speckles. And I'm guessing this is the blocking it's, process as well. That is my blocking pads. Yes, my blocking process. So there we go. This was made with Lorraine's hand-dyed yarn. Gosh, she's popular while she's being interviewed, isn't she? Overly popular girl. Okay, there we go. Let's bring you back. Let's, let's reverse this slightly and say, what is the best handmade gift you have ever received? I can't recall if I ever even got a handmade gift. <gasps> Don't oh, say that. No, that is wrong. That is wrong. Um, mittens from my grandmother oh. when, we were, when we were kids. Hand hand knit mittens. Oh. That was so long ago I almost forgot. But yeah. That's sweet. I like that oh, because there's sentiment in there. Don't have oh. them now, but they're long gone. But yeah, I still remember now that, yeah. I'm glad I could bring that memory back for you, Lorraine. Again, I'd pat you on the head, but you know. It's okay because I don't like getting patted on the head. <gasps> don't say that. I want to call you a good girl. 
I'm well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you listen to music while you're crafting? Sometimes, yes. And I listen to uh, country music. Anything in particular that you, any particular artists that you go and steer toward, or is it just, no, I don't care what era, I don't care which direction, I, it's just this. I put the TV on the Stingray station of the hot country, and it's a mix of artists. Is, so, does that include different eras as well? Uh, it does to an extent. It does a little bit, but it's it's not like the old country. Um, I think they may have a station that covers old country music. But this is mostly from, I would say, probably uh, late 1990s and uh, into the 2000s. Uh, jiving. I say jiving, that's wrong. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Uh, heel kicking around around the house while she's hand dyeing and doing a few spins and tipping her hat and all in her PJs. Okay, next question. What is one crafting tool or supply that you wish you would have invented? That's a tough one. Oh, yeah. I've just, I've just kind of got into that. What the heck? It's a tough one. That's a new question. I'm stumped at that one. Sorry. This is why you should never research the spotlight because the questions differ each time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't really research. I just um, mm -hmm. we watched, mm -hmm. I watched some of the, of the replays on a few of the last um, she was doing well, research and making yeah. cheat sheets, guys. She was yeah, writing down well, answers. There. <laughs> well, it was it was more um, points that I to recall my memory, and um, I don't. I think I would have to say, um, like a previous person that was interviewed, is yarn that you could get that's. Um, like a sweater quantity of yarn in one package that is uh, does not necessarily have to be hand washed or blocked and comes in a variety of colors, but I would prefer bear, a lot of bare yarn myself. So yeah, I would say a bare yarn that uh, does not have to be hand washed. Chatelaine unwashed. Buy it now. At Walmart? But pre-washed. Pre-washed, but you do not have to, and bare, but that you do not have to hand wash it when you're for um, washing instructions. You can see the little tag now with a picture of the Eiffel Tower on it. No, it, it would have a picture of my... Um, family farm and that's the picture. Oh, that is the picture that I put on most of my uh the thumbnail I use for most of my videos it is oh, our, it is family farm oh that's so sweet oh. and and it's hard to see but my father is actually in that picture along with his sister and his older sister and uh, his grandparents Okay, stop it. Shush. Shh. No, don't shush because that'll be a waste of spotlight. Um, okay. oh. um, what craft project are you currently working on? My uh, knitted uh, Christmas sweater for my daughter. <gasps> almost finished. She's been saying that for the past couple of weeks. Almost finished, almost finished. I'll send you a picture. I'm still yeah. waiting for an updated picture, missus. I, I know I don't have an updated picture. I uh, have damage to my shoulder and mm -hmm. I have not picked up knit needles or a crochet hook in the past week, to be honest. I'm very limited on, on how much I can do. So, but 
it's almost finished. I've sewn the sleeves. Well, I've attached the sleeves to the sweater. I just have to um, knit the neckband and so finish sewing up the sleeves and it'll be done. Oh, well, heal quickly, miss. Heal quick. Okay. What motivates you to make YouTube content? My, uh, my subscribers and my watchers. Um, seeing comments, uh, wanting me to come back. So it is my viewers and my subscribers, mostly my subscribers, which I would like to them to leave more comments. Um, even if it's just, hi, how are you doing? Or maybe the odd little blue heart. Purple for me. <clears throat> but, but, I know, but purple <laughs> is uh, made up of blue. But, 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 but the person my, leaving my it channel, leaves the blue splodge. My channel, my heart. <laughs> that, that's very true. It's very true. Okay, next question. How old were you when you first learned hand dyeing? When you first learned it? 58. Not quite 58. And is that because somebody introduced it to you or you found something and went, oh, I could do that? I actually had a friend on Facebook. Her name was Jeannie Black, Jeannie Far Farham Black, Farmham. Oh, I got it written down because I was going to forget. Jeannie Black Farham. Farnham. She, um, I seen some of her hand dyed yarn and I just made a comment that I wish I could do that. And through uh, messaging of with uh, over Facebook, uh, she helped me do my make my first batch of hand dyeing hand dyed yarn. So um, it, it was like a long time thinking, oh, gee, I wish I could do that, but one comment and a really, really generous person that I did not know that well about other than seeing a picture on Facebook. And she was generous enough to help me. So. That's really sweet. Oh, what a nice lady. You're never too old to learn. Never. And, and never. You're, not old, you're not old, you're just older. And wiser, hopefully. Mm. We still make mistakes, though. So. Well, some of us are human. It happens. Exactly. Okay. Where do you get most of your supplies from? Which you've all already touched on a little bit, but uh, no. give us some more info. Michael's, as far as... Uh, the um, food coloring gel mm -hmm. for natural uh, dyes and uh, Amazon. And uh, I have found through uh, Han, or, oh, I'm going to get her name wrong. Her name is Frida. She also has a YouTube channel. And can't remember her name. I'll have to look it up. But she introduced me to a uh, yarn outlet in Turkey. It's called Iplek Outlet. And they're on uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I've put an order in for some some of his yarn. And uh, I've, I haven't... Uh, completed my transaction with him yet so but from seeing her unboxings i'm not going i know i'm not going to be disappointed and i do have some berry yarn coming in that order so every time you say bear yarn i'm thinking of someone sitting there knitting from a grizzly no that's what's in my head b-a-r-e which means I know what you mean, but tell yes. me you had that. I know. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> I'm a good girl, honest. I don't know if you could get make yarn out of bear hair. Hey, we, we can make yarn out of anything. Pretty much. Make people. Okay. Do you use any particular plans, patterns, etc., to do your hand dyed? No. It's all trial and error. So I I just look at my supplies of colors that I have and decide, well, I'll try this, that, and the other and um, go from there. And sorry. I I knew that turmeric would give you a yellow color. Yeah. And I picked up some couple of other spices and recently uh, dyed some of that yarn and to see what it looked like and it is in the bottom of my bag sorry for the crinkling guys I know yes. some of you love it but just in case you're wearing headphones I am sorry oops that one I think this is the better one. So for this, I used cayenne, pow cayenne powder and turmeric and one other paprika that I used. Mm -hmm. So the turmeric died really well took really mm -hmm. well. The uh, cayenne powder and the uh, paprika just pretty much have kind of uh, little hints of it. I'm really surprised the paprika didn't take more. I, I know. I thought because it was dark that it would. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. Turmeric. I mean, you've only got a touch turmeric and you're stained for days. Yes. So yes. I'm not surprised with that, but very surprised with the paprika. But that was that was uh, kind of a out there thing trying to add different to the turmeric because I knew the turmeric would work for sure, but the um, paprika and the cayenne I was wasn't too sure on. I was a little hesitant, but I thought, oh, what the heck? Let's give it a go and see what happens. That's but it. Got to I, give it a go. I like the way it turned out anyway. So good. And again, no failures. No. No failures. Okay. What inspired you to start YouTube? I actually had a few people kind of encourage me. I was playing around with the idea, thinking, gee, I could do that. I can show my works. And one of them was you. What uh, did I do? I did nothing. I believe in one statement you said, go for it, girl. Um, oh, that, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Antoinette from T Two OGs, Hook and, and oh, Stephen Island Style. Good girl, yeah. Uh, Charlene from Charlene Crochet Corner. Um, yeah. My friend Bev and my brother Gary from uh, different parents. Hi, Gary, even though I'm not supposed to say hi. <gasps> How do you know he's in here? Uh, oh. He told me he would try. He would be here. Okay. And, and my aunt, Matowney Bun, hello, who gave me a call just before. Oh. Just going on and on. Hello, how are you doing? I can't see you, but I'm saying hello anyway. Shh, wait, wait. <laughs> Next question, Mrs. Question, question. <clears throat> um, how long does it take you to do a typical hand dye, Hank? From Total from start to finish about from a day. A day and a half. Start to finish a about a, a half. about a day and a half. Yes, and that's literally from getting the bare yarn right through to hanging it up. Yes, 
gosh, you're a quick worker. Gosh. Okay. That's average. That That's fine. That's what I asked for. That's all yep. good. It's cool. Sometimes things happen. It takes longer. Sometimes you're lucky and it's a lot quicker. Sometimes. Yep. Okay. Are you known or do you have a particular technique or style? No. I, Anything I, goes. Pretty much. It, like I said, with the yarn dyeing, it's pretty much trial and error. So I'll try something and if if it doesn't work, then I'll think of something else to try. And uh, but right now, um, I'm pretty happy with uh, what I do. I uh, start with uh, soaking my yarn and then put it in the pan and heating the water, heating it up and uh, then putting the dye, putting the dye and uh, going from there. So, but uh, I do have different ways of applying the uh, the dye, but no particular particular uh, method. It's whatever I feel like that day. I I love that you're a trier, you're a go getter, and you you'll just get on with it. It'll happen. I'm a little slow, but yeah. Yeah, the, the speed isn't isn't a key to very much. A few things, yes, but not in this instance. You're fine. Slow starter. Slow starter. <laughs> okay. This should be fairly easy for you. <clears throat> what was your very first video? My very first video was introduction to my channel, and uh, it was also um, to introduce uh, hand dyeing on March 15th of this year, or January 15th of this year. See, that was a nice easy one because it's nice and recent, which is great. Easy to recall. Plus I have them written in a book. That helps as well. <laughs> with, with, the date, with the dates and the titles of what they are. See, and instead of just looking on YouTube for it, she's got a special book for it. I like that. I like that. It's nice to have everything. For me, I write everything down. I've got lists about lists. Love it. Everything's written down. I can just never find where I've written something down. That's the bad thing. Anyway, this isn't about me. This is about you. So I'd like to ask, what do you like most about your hand dyeing? I think the process. If it would be a little quicker... Uh, but I like the process of doing it and seeing the colors come to life, seeing how they interact. Make they look different they, every time. And they look great in the pan. <laughs> so I hold my breath when I go to rinse. But <laughs> Please don't go turning into a Smurf, Lorraine. <laughs> no. Well, I, they're blue, your favorite color. <laughs> okay i'm gonna make you big okay we're gonna ask a question that was similar to one earlier but describe what your channel is about to all of those people that have no idea so my channel is about yarn dyeing um i help people hopefully uh through the process and guide you or show you how, what I do and how I do it. Uh, my channel is also about crocheting and knitting. Uh, I show my works, what I've made. Um, and uh, right now I have some uh, knitting tutorials out, pretty basic, uh, showing people how to uh, knit um, dishcloths or scarves, um, which I'm way overdue for another tutorial but like I said with my shoulder the way it is it is uh, kind of hard for me to do it but uh, right now it is mostly hand dyeing and showing my makes your chatelaine makes chatelaine makes and that's why I chose that name yeah. because chatelaine's my family name goes back a long way and we have talented uh, creative people in our family 
and I wanted to represent my family. And I figured makes because I make things and it doesn't necessarily have to be yarn related. I also um, do dabble in some cake decorating. That's why I have so many uh, uh, color gels from uh, <laughs> for, for the cake decorating. Uh, but yeah, that way I can um, have on my channel anything that I make. Perfect. Okay, next question. Is there anything you really don't like about hand dyeing? That, it, right, that sometimes it takes a long time. If, if it, there was a way that you could speed up the process and still have the same outcome, um, I would love that, but uh, the time it is time consuming. So I, I don't like the fact that it pretty much takes me all afternoon and into the evening to actually do the dyeing process. It's worth it in the end, girl. It's worth it. It is. It is. When you see the, pro, the, the, pro, the, the finished item, it is worth it. Yeah. Um, I do have, Oh, Oh, I, you want to make me think I have, I will make you big. These were dyed with um, fair yarn from Knit Pick. These are not my favorite color. Uh, they are my daughter's favorite. Or one is. Um, my husband actually named this yarn, called it um, Seaweed. And oh, I remember this. I like this. It is a really nice, really nice green i'm trying to find that oh now bring it back it was good yeah um it is a really vibrant it's hard to tell on here but it is a really vibrant green and because my husband had named it seaweed i said well it doesn't actually look like seaweed yet so i added some uh chestnut brown and azatec gold to it and over dyed Focus. There we go. Oops. Ooh, I'm going way. Some of the gold. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. There we go. I love that, Hank. I remember seeing the video and yeah. thinking, "Well done, hubby." I've actually, no. I've actually had people ask to buy this. Yeah. There you go. She's in there. And actually, I had one person ask me before it was even completed, and I said, it's, oh, but it's not finished yet. But um, you got a talent, girl. People like it. Okay. Um, what's, oh, okay. It's now time for you to choose your last question from me. Okay. So you get to pick a number between 47 and 82 77 77 i had a couple of numbers already picked out <laughs> you cheat well i don't know what the question is but depending on the range the number range that i had to pick um 77 is the year my oldest daughter was born so it's an honor of her Okay, your last question from myself is, has the way you have worked changed from when you first started? Yes, because um, I started with crock pot and the um, food coloring mm -hmm. and the wool blend. Actually, I think it's pretty much 100% wool. Um, and I, uh, graduated to, uh, a large chafing pan and, um, the acid dyes. So that's an improvement. Um, mind you, I like the way both turn out and I've also, uh, dyed some cotton and, uh, acrylic. So the, the. I've graduated from wool to wool blends and acrylic 
and cotton um, using acid dyes. On so, woods, not woods. So going from a crock pot that pretty much once the water's heated, you add your your gel, mix it in, and let it set to a shaving pan where you heat it up, add your dye, keep coming back, and until it's till you think it's done. So it has it has uh, changed, yes. She's upgrading, and soon she'll be in a factory. Right, we are now at the end of my portion of the interview. So now we're going to turn to the questions from our live supporters. We have a maximum of 15 minutes here. So if you still have a question to ask, get it in the chat quick. Because as soon as I've gone through the questions that I have here saved, that will be the end. And any other questions, you'll just have to go over to Lorraine's channel and go and ask her yourself. Okay, Lorraine, first oh. question. Ingrid's Inspirations asks two questions. She's greedy. She wants two questions at once. First question, what dye would you recommend for acrylic? Acid dye. Um, yeah, right now I use, um, what kind is it? Right now I use a Jaguar acid dye. Oops. Jaguar. Uh, that is from Nitpicks or Amazon. Uh, uh, there is another one, um, Dharma, that is uh, pretty, I heard is, is a good acid dye to use as well. But for acrylics, you, um, from what I hear, you would need to use an acid dye. So. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the Jaguar I personally have used, so that's why I would recommend the Jaguar um, because I've used that one and I know what it, what it You works. know it works and it yes. works well. Yeah. Ingrid also asks, what is your best method to get a soft ombre? I have only done tonals, which is pretty much hit and miss. Um, you could, uh, start with um, dipping your yarn into the dye bath and gradually dipping it. If you keep you dipped down so far and then just keep dipping it, you would get a different, um, you would end up with an ombre going from um, dark to light, but which is pretty much a tonal. Uh, although some, I think the difference is that the ombre has uh, a longer, um, change in between where mm -hmm. you, with the tonal it could be shorter see no i didn't know that i'm i'm learning things with with you guys i love the fact that even myself whoever comes up here i learn something new and i'm sat there going Ooh. dip dying Ooh. okay next question comes from knitting turnpike what fibers do you like to work with and why I like using the wool blends. Um, they, to me, they seem to uh, pick up the dye quicker. And sometimes your uh, fibers puff out. The one that I did with the uh, turmeric, that, uh, the fibers in that really puffed out because the, the, um, difference in the strand is went from like say um, between a DK weight or three and a four to like a five or a six even though it was the same uh, the same yarn that I started with mm -hmm. you, you couldn't tell that it was the same because it didn't look the same it really puffed out the fibers but but i enjoy working with the the wool blends 
Gina has also asked, how do you choose the colors you use to dye your yarns? I look at what I have in stock and just think uh, of a, I want to start with, say I want to dye something along the blue lines. So I have different uh, blues and when it breaks, you end up with, uh, well, purple, you end up with, with, with blue and, and red shades or pink shades when, when it breaks. But I try to look at it and pick one color and it's mostly just what do I feel like using as a main color mm -hmm. and then, and then from what I have, oh, I can, I can combine it with, I can add this color and this color and see how that works out. Um, to, to, sometimes it's, you can add two colors together to, and, and make a new shade of just one color. But it's mostly, I look at it and see, oh, what do I feel like, color do I feel like doing today? And that's how I do it. A, a very much mood related. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question comes from Karen Y. She says, I'm a hand dyed yarn noob, so please bear with me. But do you have a favorite hand dyeing style such as tonal, speckled, ombre, or solid? I I I say um, more tonals. Um, I am trying to to develop a process for speckled, uh, which I haven't come up with. As you've seen, that blue and purple and pink yarn, uh, but. Um, Solids is low on the list of my favorites. I would say tonal because I haven't actually come up with a um, speckled yarn yet. Mm -hmm. So from what I've made, it would be the tonal. Okay, tonals. Knitting Turnpike has asked another question. What is your biggest dying success and your biggest failure? And just to answer the bit in brackets, Gina, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> my okay, I can say my biggest failure. Sorry what? for the cream calls. Yeah, sorry. was the cotton because this was supposed to be red and it is pink. That is definitely pink. This was supposed, this is another one that's close to the, the failure. This was supposed to be red and green and it is light green and pink. And pink certainly likes to make an appearance, huh? Yep. And I would have to say the seaweed is my greatest success. Yay. We like I like seaweed. I like seaweed. Not just to eat, but in yarn now too. Okay, the last question comes from Be Yourself with Jane, who has asked, I was wondering if you had tried dyeing with onion peels. I had somebody ask me that. I wonder if it's the same person. I'll have to comment on one of my dyeing videos. I have not tried it yet. Um, The thing with dyeing with uh, the red onions would be you would have to use a lot of the um, part that I 
particularly eat when I cut up an onion. Um, but it is on my list. I also have uh, picked up some um, egg dyeing kits to mm-hmm. try. So, uh, but I have I have not used uh, food as a natural um, dye. No. Well, there's another thing to try maybe at some point if you get landed with a great big sack full of onions. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would take quite a bit of uh, the red onion to to make the uh, the color turn okay. out. If anyone wants to send Lorraine a sack full of red <laughs> onions, I think she might be grateful just to give give the onion dying a go, you know? Right. It's that's that's an interesting happy mail, is it not? <laughs> well, the thing is, though, it probably cost a lot of people a lot of money shipping it over here with the cost of shipping nowadays. So I can promise you, I'm not sending you any onions, Lorraine. No. <laughs> but right, I, I don't think I would be able to accumulate enough before the onions would dry out. Well, so, you never so, they wouldn't, never. so they wouldn't. Well, that, that's why I say I don't think I could accumulate enough um, to actually produce a color. One day, maybe. Now, Lorraine, our time is up. Thank you to everyone who has joined us at this time when we've been live, and for all your questions and your compliments, which will soon be passed on to Lorraine. Also, a thank you to those who are watching the replay, whether that be on my channel or whether that be over on Lorraine's. It really does help us both with with watch hours. So thank you very much. Now, Lorraine, please stay where you are. And to everyone else, thank you very much for joining us. And hopefully, maybe, fingers crossed, see you at another one. If I get a creator, come over. Please help. People, Thanks, everyone. Help. Take care. Thank you very much. And see you on the other side.